vitamin C can have an equal or even superior effect to larger doses of vitamin C given intravenously. I was wondering how true that really is. I'm glad you're talking about it. Explain why. Well, <clears throat> when you take vitamin C intravenously, uh, you ultimately get it inside the cell in two different ways. Uh, the vitamin C that becomes spent or oxidized has already lost its electrons what's called DHAA, dehydroascorbic acid, has a way that it can just pass into the cell without consuming any further energy. But it's already oxidized and spent, so it's got to be recharged once it's uh, inside the cell and, again, use up cellular energy to become the active form of vitamin C that you want. The rest of the vitamin C that you get from an IV, which is still in its reduced, or unoxidized state, needs an active, energy-consuming carrier process at the cell membrane to get that vitamin C inside the cell. So once again, you have to consume energy to get the vitamin C in there. On the other hand, incredibly as it may seem, even though you put the vitamin C there directly into the blood when you take these liposomes by mouth because they're encapsulated in these super tiny lipospheres, it gets into the cells, through the cells, into the blood, and into the payload areas, not only inside the cells, but also inside what's called the subcellular organelles, which is the mitochondria, the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum. You get vitamin C delivered deep in the intracellular area, the nucleus, everywhere you need it. So <clears throat> this is why uh, a, a small dose, of or lipo C can have an equivalent impact to a much, much larger dose of intravenous. Now, I'm not trying to talk anybody out of getting IV vitamin C by no means. I mean, I, I feel, and it, it's the case for myself and family and friends, that if you're dealing with an illness, especially uh, an acute infection or acute toxin exposure, the more vitamin C in as many different ways that you can get it in the body, the better. So, I mean, I advise take an intravenous, take an oral liposome, take an oral regular vitamin C like sodium ascorbate because this also helps clean out the gut and get rid of toxins there that are compromising things. And then even adding a fourth type of vitamin C called ascorbyl palmitate, which is a fat-soluble form of vitamin C. So... I absolutely advocate to get a quick and positive response in just about any condition to get as many different forms of vitamin C in you as possible. Having said that, I will also add that having the liposome encapsulated vitamin C handy is one of your greatest first aids that you can have because of this ability to get inside cells you can, in many cases, have uh, what we would call an intravenous impact orally. And this was something I didn't even know existed when I started my vitamin C research, but uh, in the last uh, five or six years, <clears throat> the science of liposomes has really leaped forward, leapt forward, and we ha now have available a lot of things to us and a lot of modalities and a lot of methods that... Uh, Dr. Pauling and Dr. Klenner and Dr. Cathcart uh, just never had the opportunity to see. If people are not taking liposomal vitamin C and they finally order it and they find themselves starting to come down with a cold, what do we do when a cold's coming on? Well, this is not intended to be an invasive, evasive answer, but everybody's different. Everybody's different because the total virus load that you have in your body when a cold is coming on, the presence of other toxins that you have in your body, uh, such as dental and other stored toxins in your tissues, which are all strongly pro-oxidant, all of this determines how rapidly you metabolize your vitamin C and how rapidly you use it up. So you basically take enough to feel better. I mean, for most people... Uh, just a couple of the grams of the liposome encapsulated vitamin C will usually, usually make a noticeable difference as somebody can say, hmm, wow, uh, I think I'm doing a little bit better now. 
And this is what I've also found happens <clears throat> not only with liposome encapsulated vitamin C, but with all forms of vitamin C, is the more you take a vitamin C and the more regularly you take it, and therefore the higher your blood levels are on a day-in, day-out basis, the more you develop what I call is your own unique health awareness or health quotient. In other words, you begin to appreciate how it feels to feel really good. And because of that, you're able to tell on any given day that, huh, you know, I just don't have that really good feeling I had the last week. Uh, I must be facing an infectious or a toxic challenge, and this allows you to then acutely bump up your amount of vitamin C and very oftentimes uh, get over an infectious or toxic challenge even before it starts because you're much more aware of when your health is beginning to show a decline. You'd say that cholesterol is not really the villain in heart disease. I really want you to talk about coronary heart disease and how vitamin C impacts the arteries. Well, in a nutshell, first more in general, any disease you develop develops because in the affected tissues, your antioxidant status, usually heralded by your vitamin C status, has dropped to a precipitously low level in that tissue, allowing oxidative stress to start to predominate, and then disease processes start. In the case of heart disease, uh, particularly the type of heart disease that most people have, chronic coronary artery disease or atherosclerosis, you develop acute and prolonged, ultimately, deficiencies of vitamin C inside the first cell layer called the endothelium of the coronary artery. And when you have this deficiency of vitamin C, you have, by definition, then an increase in free radicals, an increase in what's called prooxidant species. The natural response of the body to any area of increased free radical or oxidative stress, which is also basically what is inflammation is, the body then sends specific types of white blood cells to that area of the body, usually monocytes, big white blood cells. And these monocytes contain, relative to the rest of the cells of the body, astronomical levels of vitamin C, 80-fold more inside these cells than in most other cells of the body. So in many ways, the inflammatory response of your immune system is almost like the body's natural attempt with a limited resource to try to redistribute, it, redistribute vitamin C levels to where they're needed. So they're trying to bring vitamin C into areas that have been chronically depleted. The problem is, is this never works because what dropped your vitamin C levels in the first place is rarely addressed. And what usually drops them is dental toxicity. When you're... Uh, have a lot of mercury in your mouth, but in particularly when you have one or more root canals, you're releasing infectious agents and toxins into your bloodstream around the clock. They make their way through the pulmonary arterial system until they come back into the left side of the heart, left atrium, left ventricle, and then boom, the very first artery after your left ventricle of your heart contracts that all these toxins and microbes are exposed to is your coronary artery. So your coronary artery gets a uh, unduly large percentage of the toxicity and the infectious agents from dental toxicity, as well as other infections in the body. And all toxins, all infectious agents are prooxidants. So when they set up shop, inside these areas, inside the endothelial cells, then the immune system tries even harder to deliver more vitamin C, causing a greater inflammation. And if you look in any medical textbook, you'll see that 
basically everything that heart disease is is crazy.